Let's do a linear correlation test having the calculator do most of the work for us. So in this particular example, I want to see if there's a linear correlation between the amount of a bribe that, student, that students give me, $10, $25, $75, 150 up to $200, um, compared with their grade. So the idea, if there's a positive linear correlation, is that we would be able to draw a line through these points that would have a positive slope. So we would have the bribe amount here as the x variable and the uh, grade there as the y variable. So for this particular one, we happen to be looking for a positive linear correlation. Well, regardless of the correlation that we're looking for, for our hypothesis testing techniques, we're going to state our hypotheses these, this way. The null hypothesis will be that rho, which is our measure, our correlation coefficient, that rho is either equal to zero which means that there is no correlation, no linear correlation anyway. And then the alternative hypothesis is that rho is not equal to zero. With not equal to zero, that means that we either have a strong positive, like this case, or we could also conclude that we have a strong negative correlation. So what we need to do is to come up with the test value r. Let's go ahead and test this at alpha equal 0 0.05. We're going to look for our test value first. To find the test value r, which is our correlation coefficient, we are going to use the calculator. There is a formula in your textbook, but it's so much easier just to let the calculator do the work. So I'm going to put my calculator here in front, and I'm going to type these values in. So as I turn my calculator on, I'm going to go into um, stat and edit so I can enter my data values. So stat and then edit. I need to clear the lists that I have. I'm just going to enter my x values into L1 and my y values into L2. So 10, 25, 75, 150, 200. And then for my um, grades, I've got 73, 79, 84. 96 and 95. We're wondering if that 95 is going to throw us off at all. So quickly checking my values. It looks like I've got them in there correctly. I'm going to go ahead and quit here with my values there, but I need to have you do one thing before your calculator will return the right information. We need to turn diagnostic on. You just need to do this one time. Once you've got it done, you will not need to go back and do it again. So in order to do that, I need to bring up the catalog, which is right here. So I'm in the home screen, I've left the list, I go second catalog, and I'm looking for diagnostic on, I'm on the A's, so scroll down however you want to until you get to the D's, there's quicker ways to do this, but I'm only going to the D's anyway. So I'm going to choose, there it is, diagnostic on, that will give me the correlation coefficient when I ask it for a linear correlation. So I choose this, making sure the arrow's in front of it, hit enter. Enter again, and it says done, and now I'm ready to do a linear correlation. I'm going to go back to my stat menu, so I hit stat. This time I'm going to do um, a, a test. I want to do the linear regression. Actually, a calc, sorry. We're just going to use calc to get the linear regression values. Um, you can either use number 4, AX plus B. There's another one down here that your textbook suggests is number 8, but why? It's the same a thing equivalently. I'm going to go ahead and choose number four, linear regression. So I choose this, but it says the linear regression for what? I want L1 comma L2. So I choose L1, um, which I'm down here on my number one um, keypad there, comma L2. So linear regression L1 comma L2. I hit enter. What it does is it returns the values for A, which would be the number in front of X on my equation, my B value, which would be uh, the y-intercept, and then my correlation coefficient, we're going to use R squared. So R is 0.9566. That looks like it's fairly strong. Remember that these correlation coefficients can only range between negative 1 and positive 1. So in our scale here between negative 1 and positive 1, we are at an R value of about 0.9566. Well, we need to compare this with our critical value. So to compare this with our critical value, we're going to go ahead and use table I. 
table I to get the critical value. So to get the critical value, we have, um, let's see, how many pairs? One, two, three, four, five pairs. I need to use, let's see, so n equals five. So my degrees of freedom is five minus two, which is equal to three. So we're going to look up three degrees of freedom, and I established alpha to be 0 0.05. So here on table I, I have um, three degrees of freedom, alpha equal 0 0.05. I am positive you can't read that, so I'll read it to you. 0.878 is going to be our cutoff. So from table I, our critical value is 0.878. My cutoff then is here, 0.878. I am well within the, um, the rejection region. So that means that for our test, we can reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis said that there was no correlation we have a large enough R value, a large enough correlation coefficient to conclude that we have a strong positive linear correlation. So I can say that there is a strong positive linear correlation, which means that I can add a second step. So I've finished my test. Let me put a line here for my second step. My second step is to go ahead and state the correlation. And that's just the equation that we got. So the linear regression, let me put my calculator up here and then I'll move it out of the way to write my value down, is the equation that I get. Ax plus b, I'm going to replace a with this value, the 0.1176, and b with that value. And then what I end up with is a linear model that models bribes versus grades. So y is equal to the a value in my calculator, 0.1176 times x plus b, pulling that right off of my calculator, 74.577.